joined now by New York Democratic Congressman Brian Higgins, who was among the incumbent Democrats who months ago went public in their opposition to Nancy Pelosi, and he joins me now. Congressman, good to see you. Good to be with you. So you were pretty candid when you first went public as to why you thought it's time for new leadership. You were worried that, in particular, the leadership was out of touch with, with some of these Frankly, some of these communities that are similar to what you represent in, in Western New York, you were talking about it's not just Pennsylvania, it's the Lancaster Pennsylvanias. It's not just New York, it's the Buffalo New Yorks. Um, what's changed in six months? Nothing. I think that, uh, you know, first of all, Congress is the most powerful branch in the federal government. And uh, the House is the most powerful branch of Congress. Uh, we have extraordinary uh, constitutional powers that are not being utilized because too much power has been consolidated under the leadership. There was a time here where uh, committees like the Ways right. and Means Committee and Appropriations had a very significant traditional role and they worked in a bipartisan manner. That's gone. Congress members and the committees have been marginalized. And I just, I ran to use the power of this office to change my community and to change the country. And uh, I don't think it's happening under this current leadership. Congressman, thank you for articulating it that way. I've, I've thought the, I've said there's only four positions that matter in Congress of the 535 members, and that is the, the two leadership positions, the ranking and the majority leader, whatever it is. We call it speaker on the House side. It's majority leader on the Senate side. And that's it. They call all the shots. So let me ask you this. I hear a lot of grumbling. I've heard grumbling from longtime incumbents like yourself. I've heard grumbling from the new members. Yeah. But nobody seems to have the guts to step up. Why do you think that is? Well, look, it's early in the process. The elections were just concluded. Uh, there are six weeks left before the new year. Uh, a lot is going to happen over the next several weeks. Uh, I have a preference. A lot of people are talking about Karen Bass out of California. Uh, Karen was the former uh, assembly speaker in California. Right. We she's served on two committees. Yeah. Uh, she's a leader within the Congressional Black Caucus, and a lot of people are excited about her. There are many, many candidates, but I think first and foremost, most, what has to be determined is, look, Nancy Pelosi is a very powerful individual. There is no question about it. But I think, you know, you will see openings potentially where candidates will begin to emerge if there is questions about her viability becoming speaker. You know, she's making the case that her experience, having been there before, having frankly seen what it's like to lose the majority um, and sort of fight to get it back, that she's learned some lessons from the previous time. Why not give her a second chance? What, what's the downside in your mind of giving her a second chance? Because she's talking a different, let, let me just first of all say this. I don't have a strong personal relationship with Leader Pelosi. Those that do say she's a good person of integrity. That is indisputable. Uh, I have a problem with a management leadership style that consolidates power under their office and marginalizes members and marginalizes committees. You know, we've been talking about lowering prescription drug prices for 20 years. Prescription right. drug prices are at a 20-year high. You want to help people or protect people with pre-existing conditions? Let them buy Medicare at 50. There are things, everybody knows what we're against. But not enough people in the country know what we're for. And I think we need a leadership that's willing to work in a bipartisan manner to raise the level of approval of the performance of the United States Congress, because as you know, it, right now it's deplorable. Right. And I think right. that we're stuck in this place that is entirely inconsistent with the constitutional powers that we have. You know, Article One of the Constitution is dealing with the Congress for a reason. Right. You know, it's thought to be closest to the people, most representative, and it's most powerful in terms of making a budget, in terms of making right. laws. Uh, we have been marginalized by the White House over a couple of decades. I'm just simply saying it's time for House Democratic majority members to reassert their authority as individual members in the committee. I did hear uh, uh, Nancy Pelosi, Speaker Pelosi, or uh, <laughs> Leader Pelosi saying today that that's exactly what she wants to do. But keep in mind, she's been in that position for 16 years and it's not changed. And I just think that we can do better in terms of holding up something affirmative right. uh, for the American people to support as opposed to uh, just, you know, exclusive resistance to the Trump agenda. It certainly looks like 
there's a leadership slate being offered, right? That, that this isn't a real competition. I think Steny Hoyer doesn't really have any competition. Jim Clyburn does have a challenger, but it does. And yes, there's, I think, three candidates for DCCC chair, but there aren't a lot of, you know, it does seem as if people are just looking for easiest paths to a leadership post, that there isn't uh, an atmosphere of, of getting anybody to run. Is there a price to be paid? Have you felt a price paid by being so publicly critical of your, of your party leader? I don't. It's based on a very legitimate issue, and that is uh, the inability to reassert uh, the traditional, historical, constitutional role uh, of Congress. So whatever the price is, it's a price worth paying. And I think uh, I think that is, you know, what I'm saying and what other people are saying, uh, uh, perhaps a lot of other people are feeling and are just not comfortable saying it as of yet. And keep in mind, when you have a lot of people maneuvering for these leadership positions, they're all positioning themselves to, at some point, ascend to the office office of speaker or majority leader. So right. if it's determined mathematically uh, that the uh, Democratic leader doesn't have the votes to be speaker, you watch. Uh, a lot of these people will rise and become candidates. And right. as I said, this is not the end of the process. This is the beginning of the process. So you, okay, so you think what happens in late November may not be the final word if she, if she is your candidate for speaker? I think that there is plenty of game left in this process. Mm -hmm. uh, you just had all the new members come in today for the first time. It, it right. was very celebratory and right. and for good reason. You know, this is a big, big accomplishment. And a lot of these folks campaign on a platform of change. And uh, I just think, you know, if we reach back to what was versus moving forward to what could be, uh, yeah. I think we make a mistake potentially and we threaten the viability or the sustainability uh, of, of a Democratic majority. All right, Congressman Brian Higgins, Democrat from Western New York. Uh, thanks for coming on, sharing your views. Much appreciated. Thanks for having me. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel, so thank you. Now do me a favor, subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Beat the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.